What's going on? Halabas Live back on a Wednesday night. Presented by Arsenal Fishing, boosted by Powerhouse Lithium. It's good to be back on a normal night after taking uh, last week was a long week fishing leech all week. Um, it, it's tough to find a, a VRBO or Airbnb that has good enough Wi Fi to pull off a stream. So, and enough time between rigging and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, welcome, Brennan Berglund. What's going on? Uh, pretty good. Just kind of relaxing out here. Just got back from Leech a few days ago. Everything is starting to settle in a little bit, and uh, my phone's been blowing up. So, thank you to everybody who's been reaching out and uh, wishing me luck at nationals. I appreciate all of you. So, thank you. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, Brennan uh, won the, the Minnesota Bass Nation TOC. So, in tradition of young guys, absolutely like kicking my butt, I just invite them on the stream and then try to learn from them. So hopefully to rectify the situation in the future and I get better. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, we were uh, acquaintances on social media, but I don't know that we've ever met in person that I'm aware of. Unless, uh, you know, something I don't, Brennan. <clears throat> well, uh, hang on a second. All right. So, so what's that? You kind of, I kind of broke up a little bit. Yeah. I was just like, I, I don't, I'm pretty sure we, although we've, uh, you know, been acquaintances on social media, I don't know that we've ever met or anything like that in person that I'm aware really of. Think I, there's a lot of people actually that I know, just like everyone kind of knows you, watches your stream. And that's, uh, it's pretty sweet <laughs> to be able to come on here at best Live. So I appreciate it 100%. Yeah. Well, you deserve it. You, uh, you had a heck of a tournament. So I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm familiar with Loon State, know quite a few people from Loon State over the years push Paul off sandbars, fish with people in your club before. Um, but uh, how long have you been, I guess, was this your, how many states have you fished? Was this your first state as a boater or what's your history in the state tournament? Um, this is my first uh, state tournament. I've been fishing with Loon State. This is my third year now. Uh, Cody Stearns actually got me into the club as a co my first year. And that's when I was still mm -hmm. in high school, just fishing like the high school trail, but being able to, be a boater now and fish the state tournament. It's unbelievable. So you just go out and just win it in your first try? <clears throat> I guess. It just, it just kind of happened that way. I think, uh, if I recall, Jim Moyna won the first state tournament he ever fished. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool. So you said you fished in high school. You fished for the, where you went, where did you go to high school in Zimmerman or where'd you go to school? I went to high school at Princeton. That's where I fished Princeton. high school. Okay. It's I feel like they've had a decent high school team for the yeah we actually started the team so i started it my sophomore year so i only got to fish it for three years but it was a lot of fun that's pretty much how i got into competitive bass fishing so nice did your uh you come from a fishing family or how did you get into bass a fishing, fishing family nothing like tournament serious though really mm -hmm. but uh you know a few small derbies with my dad every once in a while kind of flowered into you know fishing high school derbies with my some of my high school friends and then my other high school friends got into it and now we have a few kids on the team but yeah it was uh, it was awesome to start it very cool <clears throat> so you uh <clears throat> so you just kind of rolled into the adult club from the the high school team got yep. into loon state uh so you didn't you didn't go the college route, do any college fishing? Oh, actually, you're in college right now, are you? I'm right. in college. I, yeah. fish I was just like, wait, there's a there's a big Montevello wrap on your boat. Now that I yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I fish with like Easton Fothergill, unbelievable angler. His college partner is Nick Dumkey. I fish with. I have, my partner is actually Blair Erickson. Um, Charlie Wright's on the team. Solomon Glenn, uh, a few other Minnesota people down there. So it's really awesome to be actually I leave for college on the 15th. So it's perfect timing. There you go. Yeah, un unbelievable and anglers and guys down there. So I love it. Where's Montevello again? Uh, literally in the smack dab of Alabama. Just uh, okay. kind of a smaller town. 45 minutes. So that south gives you the Alabama. opportunity to fish the Coosa River and the TVA and all that stuff's pretty accessible then, I would imagine. Coosa sucks, but I mean, that's kind of our home lake. But yeah, that's where everybody will go out and after class and attempt to learn something or else everyone just goes to gunners well that's where i like to go to sure i actually several years ago uh I've, i fished the regional in uh alabama gunnersville before they went you know they switched around this was probably 
2018, somewhere in there. I don't know, <clears throat> somewhere to somewhere in there. Um, but I did make the day three cut there. So uh, Steve Brummer and I, we we slid. This was in April. We slid down to Logan Martin uh, for a morning, and that was actually pretty fun. We just kind of threw a jerk bait and shaky heads around on like shallow gravel clay points, and those uh, those Coosa River spots don't mess around when it comes to a jerk bait. No, they don't. Actually, the uh, Logan Martin is my favorite spot on the Coosa to go. We've had like a school a school tournament there, and then uh, it's just kind of the place that I go to to like catch fish. Or actually, I love throwing a jerk bait on that lake too. It's my favorite favorite part of the Coosa. So, just kind of learned it over about a, a year ago. So, definitely one of my yeah. favorite places to go. And it's decently close to where we are too. It's only like an hour out of the way compared to Gunnersville, which is like two and a half or something. So sure. Yeah, I don't know if it was just when I was there, but like we were like, and like when those things would hit on the shallow points, it would just like, like it would just completely rip back the other. You know, like up here, like bass just load up on a jerk bait, or you might feel a tick or something. But like there, they would just yank it back the other way, and I was like, whoa, this this makes jerk bait a lot more fun. Yeah, it was fun time, like starting to get used to like spot fishing because they're a lot meaner than like a lot of people say. Like you. I've heard a lot of people, all oh, spots are so mean. Spots are so mean. You're like, yeah, whatever. And then you actually hook up on like a good spot. You're like, oh my gosh. Like you just, it's unbelievable. They tear up your jerk bait. They're, they actually got like sharper teeth than like anything I've ever seen before for not actually having teeth, but they freaking tear up everything. Sure. But that's a, they're a lot of fun. Yeah. I think the Coosas more so than the Kentuckys, but yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're a fun, fun fish. A lot of familiar faces in the chat. What's up, everybody? Good to see everybody doing well here. Sounds like the audio and video is good. We're rolling here. Um, yeah, I actually just got off the lake. I ran over to just a Marion. I had like two out, I don't know, maybe two and a half hours before. Uh, and I was like, man, I, I went out and did some other stuff this week. And I was like, I just like, we'll talk about it. But like, I'm pretty sure live scope was a pretty big part of <laughs> Leech Lake for you. Um, and I actually spent a lot of time doing it. But I was like, I just need more reps on that thing. And I, so I went out at night and married and just kind of like literally got on the weed line and just started like looking for blobs and dots and things like moving on the, you know, trying to get better at, you know, picking out things. What's, what's, what's a big enough dot to throw at that's worth your while and things like that. And I actually did catch a couple nice large mouth on a drop shot. And then I caught my first ever chicken rig or chicken jig fish tonight. I caught about a four pounder on the chicken jig. Oh gosh. So check, checked a few buckets. I don't know. I always see people throwing it. I never caught, I've caught a pike on it, but I've never caught a bass. And so I finally got a, a good one. So. Yeah, I'm the same way. I throw it, think I'm going to get a few good bites on like some rock to grass transitions. And I've snagged a bunch of pike in the bottom of the head and stuff like that. So I don't even know if that counts, but. Yeah, the one pike I had, I literally had him like wacky rigged. Like he was like right in the stomach and like, but so it was good. Yeah. So other than that, uh, Ralph looks like he renewed his membership. Awesome. Welcome back, Ralph. Um, I'm assuming you know Stewie here. I, do. I went to high school with him. Nice. Oh, my dogs. Hopefully my dogs aren't too loud up there. Uh, Aaron, Leech Lake is, I guess, three and a half hours straight north of Minneapolis, pretty much. North of Brainerd, if you know where that is. Kind of dead center north of Minnesota. It's a ways up there. All right. Banger checking in. Lots of uh, lots of Brendan fans checking yeah, in. <laughs> so let's let's get so we kinda of talked about your history. Uh so are you a fresh are you a sophomore at Montevallo? Uh, this or? is my this will be my junior year coming up. Okay, your junior year. Yep. All right, cool. Um so we'll we'll probably circle back on that. So you uh we had the state tournament, it was like last week. Had you had fished leech before yes. the state tournament? So you've been out there before? Yep. We actually had uh, me and my dad fished the team trail. Didn't do so hot. The wind picked up. And mm -hmm. I, I can't say I've ever really fished leech lake when it's been that crazy of winds. But it mm -hmm. was just hard to keep your trolling motor in the water, kind of see what you're throwing at and, uh, you know, really fish a spot efficiently. So I'll all of our spots were getting wind blown, and that was like the first time I kind of figured out what it took to catch bigger smallies on leech and we had to catch them right away and we just we caught one big one in the morning and after that the wind just blew too hard for us to really do anything effectively so kind of tucked around 
moseyed around on the south end and it didn't really work out for us but mm-hmm. yes i have put a lot of time into leech this year right. anyway so you, you you kind of put a fair amount of practice in for the team trail <clears throat> found some things and then with the weather uh <laughs> for the state tournament you were more effectively be able to to probe them uh and, and kind of expand i assume uh did you did you use all three days of practice for the state um, tournament i actually used about two two and a quarter i actually okay. wasn't planning like i was planning on doing it. i just didn't know i decided to go up probably a half a day earlier than i thought i was going to and I caught one, a big one right away, and I spent the rest of practice graphing. I think I graphed for like 11 hours or something, just trying to find this, trying to repeat the same thing that I caught or with the big one that I caught earlier. And I guess it worked out, found a lot of uh, effective uh, like things to fish, not just throwing at random, random areas, kind of found the exact thing that I was looking for over and over and over again. So do you feel uh, like the thing that you were looking for? at state was the same thing you were looking for at the team trail or did it shift in those weeks um it was mostly the same thing but during the team trail they were a little bit shallower that i found um so in the team trail i think a lot of the stuff that i found was like seven to like 11 feet of water and then the mm-hmm. uh toc was more like 10 to 14 fit like 15 maybe but they slid out just on the same type of stuff that I was looking for. So I kind of knew the areas that were good and or that held a lot of fish. So made it easier on me. Right. So were you like targeting, was it a, like a certain size boulders or I mean, like, or what, what, uh, was it pretty easy to scan and find it? Or do you like, or did you have to like scan it and then go back and look at it with your front facing or like, how, how did you like approach figuring out what was worth fishing and what wasn't worth? I started off trying to find like some transition stuff like in the morning where they'd be like cruising, like chasing some bait or something. And I found a few, but they were harder to catch because they were so keyed in on all that bait that was out there. So you get in front of them, they kind of just see it and move out of the way or they'd see it and nose in on it and keep chasing their bait. So then I just tried to find some fish that weren't around as much bait. And that was like one of the things that I kind of figured out was where the fish were willing to bite right away. They're the ones that were there wasn't a lot of bait next to the rock or the transition or the little mini like rock pile that no one else has found. So I was just kind of finding that unpressured area where there wasn't a lot of bait there. So they would eat mine instead of just the other bait. That was all the bait balls that were flying around. So how many, I guess, like what, how many areas or spots did you feel like you had coming into the tournament? One, but it was a, it was a pretty big area. Sure. Okay. So you kind of had one area, but you had a lot of like little sweet spots within the area. Uh, High percentage points and this whole, this giant flat. And I've just idled the whole thing and found the high percentage stuff that I feel like a fish would be sitting on. So you just like then in the, I mean, were you uh, just fishing or did you wait till you saw fish? Like during, I mean, like, were you like scoping everything and then waiting to see activity or were you actually like fishing the areas? regardless of whether you saw something on front facing no if i didn't i tried and on the first day i actually kind of nipped me in the butt a little bit on the first day was oh i caught i caught one here before i caught one here before and i just tried to stick it out too long and i wasn't seeing any but i thought there might be one there and it never worked out so i wasted a lot of time casting at what i thought or at least there, i thought there was a fish there but there ended up being nothing there so then I, after that i just kind of scrapped it and just went and targeted fish that i could see in live scope so you basically just go like high bypass or idle sweet spot to sweet spot scan it wait till you saw something yeah. and then that's, that's actually exactly how it worked out yeah just pretty much the most efficient way that i felt like i could do it i felt if like i tried to make it so where i i wasn't casting an empty space like a whole like a big rock pile i was trying to find the biggest rock on that rock pile and then that's where I feel like they'd be congregated. So always like knowing that I'd be able to cast out a fish made it a lot more effective for me. A lot less yeah. worse cast, I should say. Just like every cast is a good cast. That was like, that was my goal was trying to hit the most sweet spots during the whole day. And I probably fished 30 to 40 of them in a single day. I just kind of rotated them until one is willing to bite. 
So what first day did you only had was it day one you only had four fish? Yep. Day one I only had four fish and I weighed in 17 pounds. So I was around the right ones, just like I said earlier, I just casting at areas where I caught one in practice and I don't know if they vacated or they were off chasing bait or what, but hurt me a little bit. I thought I was gonna come back to haunt me on the last day too. I was stressing. Sure. <clears throat> so did you like catch them? early or all in a flurry or what how did day one go down was it like one every two hours or what will kind of walk us through how your day one unrolled it yep so i caught my first i caught my first fish on day one at around 9 30 and for me that was a long time in between there's a long time in between bites yeah like so that's that. like over two hours of fishing right. you know, run time from yeah right. even after the first hour i was like oh my god i'm panicking i need to do something else and then i kind of settled in i was like all right i know it lives here there's a big opportunity here to catch a big bag. And I finally settled down, boom, got my first one, about a three and a half pounder. And that kind of settled me in and told me that I was doing the right thing. But it wasn't until the sun came out. Like the sun was like my whole bite, seemed like the whole the whole week. The clouds were out, they'd get off, the, they'd get off whatever they were, they'd look up and start chasing bait, bait balls. The sun came out, the bait balls went to the surface or near the surface, and then they'd go back down to the rock, and I think they'd be eating more crayfish. So that's kind of what I, what I thought was happening anyways. And then after that, I think my second bite came at like 11 o'clock, so another hour and a half in between. And then and that was about a four pounder. And I caught them all do like throwing a drop shot. I was, you know, I was seeing them on live scope and I'd cast them and that's, if they weren't going to bite on the first one, two or three, like one, two or three casts, I'd move because I just figured I'm not, I'm not going to waste any time on this fish. I'm going to try to find the ones that are willing to bite right now. And then I caught one actually right after that, at like 1130. And I was feeling really good. Momentum was there. My call was hyped up for me. And then uh, kind of stuck it out too long on a, this one part of the flat. Moved to a different part. 2.30, I got my big one, which is like a five and three quarter that I caught. And then we had to go because I needed to make sure I made it back on time. Four fish and a late penalty does not set you up to win. So, yeah. Um, the, uh, were you just drop shotting or? Yep. That's what I caught every single fish on. I lost Are a few on a spy baits bait, or sticking with the same baits or like. X zone hot shot minnow three and a quarter okay. and the perch color that was pretty much what did it for me nice and it floats so i could i was actually tight lining my drop shot so I'd, I'd hold it there and i try not to move it as much and it seems like they'd bite it on the fall or if i held it right in front of their face next to whatever they were sitting on it seemed like they just couldn't stand it and just had to eat it almost okay. how what type of leader length and weight um my weight it was depending on the wind. So I had a three ace and a quarter and I use a quarter for most of the time just so I could fly it down there and get it to the rock or the transition rock pile, whatever. Wasn't wasting any time waiting for it to get down to the bottom. I used a three ace, three ace more when the wind kind of picked up on the second and third day or the first and third days, excuse me. Sure. What kind of, like how high were you <clears throat> floating your bait up? Probably 18 inches. Okay. My drop was so from steady. my- Nothing. Yeah. Nothing crazy high, nothing crazy short. Sure. Nope. I was using uh, a six pound leader though. I don't know if that really made a difference or not, but I just figured if something's gonna, if they're looking at the bait for too long, I don't know. It was sunny. So I don't know if my line was throwing off a glare or something. So I just tried to use the thinnest line I could get away with. You said you were using six? Yeah. I think you could get away with six on drop shot, but I don't think like if you were throwing a net or anything like oh, that. No. It yeah, gets chewed up too but, fast, it seems like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard a lot of people uh, having issues with that. I've never, heard, I've never heard that before. <laughs> nice, we got a, a big Facebook contingent. There's like 40 people watching on Facebook tonight. That's a pretty large number. So welcome Facebook people. Let's see, we got a... So, uh, Ralph, thanks for upgrading your membership. Awesome. Tyler says, what's the main forage up by Leech? There's definitely a fair amount of craws. You definitely see them swimming around up shallow. And I know like at least the larger mouth I was catching, they were spitting up craws. Did did your smallies spit up craws? Oh yeah. And, and the live wells when they got to the surface, that's what they were spitting up. A few like uh shiners, minnows, 
but a lot yeah, of crops during the middle of the spot day. Spot tail right? shiners are a thing there. Um, there was a lot of like little pin minnow type things. Uh, I don't know if the fish were really feeding on those or not, but uh, there was a lot of those. And then honestly, I don't know if you thought I saw this, but I feel like in certain sections, I saw a lot of like what looked like yearling smallmouth. Oh, really? Swimming around. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I guess I didn't get a look at it that good. So I just kind of saw a bait ball or, you know, a single sure. shiner by the surface. I was like, all right, so now I'm kind of getting an idea of what they're eating around here. So, so how did, uh, how did your, your day one co-angler fare? Uh, my actually, I kind of felt bad, but because my day one and day two co was both zeroed. Uh, my day three co had a chance at two or three fish. We only brought in one small mouth though. So, I mean, I kind of felt bad. Did they, but, did they have any on or? Yeah, I think a few of them did or got a few bites. My day three co caught a walleye, a pike, uh, broke one off under a dock later in the day. And then just like a three pound smallmouth, but day one and two was pretty tough for them. It's a tough gig. Um, I know all the the co's on my team on Twin City were like really hoping after practice, right? Like after practicing with us and realizing like, I mean, the weights look really good, but I think you would agree that it wasn't easy by any means. Like catching smallmouth was not easy. So as a co-angler, if... Uh, I mean, it was pretty hard to catch them without front facing sonar, honestly. Yes, that was, um, that was the big thing. It's like, I'm throwing at, I know what our fish and like they're kind of just blind casting. Like, I felt horrible, but yeah. So, like, most of my kills were like just hoping they were going to get a boater that said they were going for largemouth. So, yeah. God. I think my uh, first kill stepped on onto the boat and saw all spinning rods and just kind of knew what was going on right away. I saw that face on his or that uh, experience on his face like dang but yeah i mean it's, it's it is really tough when i'm live scoping them and they're in the back behind me i tried to tell them like oh okay there's a rock here here and here you'll feel it if, if you get near it kind of just hold it there and tight line it. so i was at least trying to help them it wasn't just oh you're on your own but i know how it is i've been a co-angler a few times and you just kind of live with it and do your best especially when they're boaters fishing smallmouth I think in a few years there'll be more, you know, bigger pop. I mean, it's it's definitely a booming population, but I don't think it's like huge, huge. It's not right. like Malax where you can just like fan cast and expect to like right. catch them. Uh, Ryan checking in. I think sounds like he was your day two co. Yeah, yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, hit the like button, guys, for uh, uh, to thank Brennan for coming on. Um, yeah, we, we'll have to have a maybe a two-year uh, membership party. That's a good idea, Daniel. Uh, uh, Marky Mark, congrats on your good finish, Mark. Way to have a big day three. Let's catching up on the, the chat here. Let's see here. Um, I guess Greg wants to know, <laughs> what would have your approach been without front-facing sonar? What, I mean, if you, like, it just went out, right, <clears throat> and you couldn't fish for largemouth, because that's probably what would have hmm. happened if you, if your, yep. if your, if your Garmin just or your front facing would have fell off the front, you probably just would have went straight to the reeds or rice. But uh, if you couldn't have done that, how would you have best attacked the smallmouth if you had to fish them? I tried to two D them up, like the you see on like that all old, old Bassmaster videos, like Cherokee, just get over it with your trolling motor till you mark a rock, drop on it, and back off. Like you see the old videos of like Seth Fighter doing that on the lag to this two D. And that's probably what I would do, but I'm spoiled. So I, I have like mega 360. So I just, I at least know where the rock would be at, but if you absolutely had nothing just to you, that's probably what I did. Just get over it till you see the rock drop on it and back off and see what happens. Yeah. Um, I heard a couple people tell me that they had better luck, at least on day later in the tournament, getting on top of the boulders and dropping on them. The fish would react better than actually casting at them. I don't know. That's just. I actually got one right, like underneath my boat that I I went over a rock. Or I cast out a rock three times, nothing bit. And I was like, oh well, there's nothing on this one. And then I got over it with my trolling motor, and I could see there one came up off the rock and like started following the boat. I was like, oh my god! So I opened the bale, let it drop, and my line just kept going. I'm like, oh my god, he's got it. So I said, look, and it was like a four and a quarter or something. And I didn't do that the last like four days of tournament and practice. So 
I don't, I guess something happened on the third day where they were willing to bite. And I tried that on yeah, the first yeah, second or two, like getting over the top of them. It's, they just seem to kind of run away from it. Yeah. I want to say John Dwyer from Prior Lake fished with one of my co's on day two, Hunter. And he would like fish, fish, you know, cast at the boulder, cast at the boulder. And then he would go to the next one and Hunter would just be like, as they were going by, and like he said, he caught three of them doing that. Like he would work the fish, work the fish, work the fish. And then when they would go by it, he would just, you know, Hunter had enough wherewithal that he was like, you know, paying attention so that when you left, he left that fish that he could make a good pitch on it. And he caught three of them doing that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I just, I don't know. I don't know why they seem to be doing that on the third day, but the first and second day, that was not the case for me that I found. It feels like you had to be, you know, 60 to 80 feet away from them long cast with a drop shot and they they bite or they wouldn't that's how it was for me anyways but it sure. was it was kind of weird um <clears throat> the uh so i honestly so like i i kind of covered my like deep dive my leech experience last week um mm-hmm. and uh i honestly spent the majority of like two plus days scanning and looking for big boulders and fishing them. And I don't know if I just wasn't in the right areas or didn't spend enough time on my scope or what, but like I completely just like did not find them. The only smallies that I found were actually shallow ones that I visibly saw with my eyes on like sand weed transitions. Um, One of them people kept running over and I couldn't fish it. And the other one I caught my only small mouth on a top water the first morning. But so like, uh, And there was a lot of guys in my club, other clubs that spent a lot of time and devoted a lot of time and it didn't work out. So like, just want to like make, make sure people understand that it wasn't as easy maybe as Brendan makes it sound. (laughs) It it really wasn't. I mean, I caught them early the second and third day, but I mean, after that, I still tried to upgrade and seems like as the day went on, just got a little bit tougher during the rest of the day, but I got mine, both my day two and day three bags pretty much right away in the morning by 10 o'clock, both days. But, I mean, that was the morning bite, so. Yeah, so day two, you said you got on them pretty quick? Yep. I had a limit and pretty had... early. And then just kind of upgraded two more times by 11 o'clock, I think. And then that was my day yeah. two. 19, day two? Yep. And then 20 on day three? Yep. Day three, I had just high high threes and low fours by 1030. Just, that just happened to be what I ended up. Just got four or five nice ones right away in the morning. Um, I'm lucky I didn't have a little scrapper in there, but even with 20 pounds, I was still sweating it out at the tank. So, but very fortunate to be able to catch five big ones right away. Cause I knew at the end of the day, I was probably going to get a little tough. Right on. <laughs> cool. So did you end up spending any time on large mouth at all during the tournament? No, I, I'm not the greatest largemouth guy, but I feel really comfortable fishing smallmouth. So that's kind of what I went out and tried to do, especially on leech. I've tried fishing for largemouth and just never seems to go my way and catch fish. Just no tournament fish, nothing that I would want to weigh in. But I do know there are a lot of guys that love, they prefer to fish largemouth wherever they go, especially on leech because leech there is actually a large mouth second place was large mouth so yeah, i want to say second was large mouth there was i mean at least half the top six was large mouth right or at least had like a mixed bag or something yeah because uh lesbach had all large mouth uh justin had all large mouth connor obviously was all small mouth or mostly small mouth mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh yeah Caught a lot of walleye fishing for those small mouth. I did. I caught a few small ones, but nothing. Daniel had a good tournament. Congrats. Let's see here. Let's see, a couple more questions here. <clears throat> I guess Benedetto. So, did you get the new uh, Arsenal swim jig? Is that what you're talking about? Um, Little Rich says, "Whatever you do, make sure you put on side two of Led Zeppelin 4. You probably don't get that reference. <clears throat> I'm pretty um, young. 
Should co-anglers be able to bring their own electronics? What would, you, what would your reaction or what would you thought if one, like, let's say your day two co shows up with an ice live scope, live scope unit? There actually was, I don't know who it was, but someone had one at the TOC. I saw it. I mean, I'm kind of laid back. I would have allowed it. I'd have, it'd be really weird, but I would have allowed it. That's just how I am. Yeah, I think as long as they're scoping, I guess, from the dash back. Right. right. Then I guess I would be okay. Right. Like, yeah, they'll be like, all right, that. I'm going to like, I'm up looking up here. Like, so if you're scoping like the back 180, I'm probably not like painting, you know what I mean? Like then, you, you right. know, you're not really interfering. Right. And you're not crossing beams. And um, so at that point, I guess that's probably fine. It would be goofy though. Like, I don't know how long in that like whole unit takes to like pack up, like when you need to run to a different spot or, holding on to it even during the run I, that's like one thing that i was thinking about when i yeah saw that would be the one thing i'd be like that'd be the other ground rule be like all right like i'm gonna tell you like i'll give you a minute warning of like when right. we're gonna leave and that thing better be packed up otherwise we're gonna have like issues <laughs> right no that's so. exactly how i'd be too uh, let's see here Frank wants to know, uh, do either of you like wobbleheads from the boat? Do you fish the wobblehead much? Not really. I know people that do. I just, one, I don't know how, and two, I don't own any, so I can't say I do or have. I've done it some, and it hasn't been the greatest hookup. What I prefer to do is actually take a Tokyo rig. I have done that. Fish it the, it's fishing the same way where you put like a bigger weight on a Tokyo rig and then drag that like a biffle head because i feel like just having that three inch drop your bait is up so like and when they eat it they get all bait whereas like right. the biffle head they get that football head in their mouth and they tend to like so I'm, i uh i prefer to use a tokyo rig instead uh, in that same way um <clears throat> have you tried any of the lakes in longville area i fished boy a long time ago i've never been on woman some of the uh, guys in our club went to 10 mile. I don't know about you fishing those lakes up there. Um, I fish Stony and baby and those lakes are like super underrated. I actually went there. I went to Stony and baby back to back days for opener. I think we, me and my friend Oz just threw a hair jig all day. I think we had 21 and 22 pounds on Stony and baby. They're right in the Hackensack area. So. Sure. Right on. Well, so uh, you plan on just like winning every state from here on out, or like what's your plan going forward? Like, I mean, I'm gonna try. I've heard some rumors that next year it's gonna be on Vermilion, so I'm kind of excited for that. That's my Anytime understanding. Anytime I get small mouth, I feel right at home. So, yeah, I think most of the lakes up there are pretty good, to be honest. Um, All right. Brendan wants to know, do you ever miss with any bigger baits like glides, crank downs, swim baits, any of that kind of stuff? I've tried for smallmouth. I just I'm not good with glides or big crank baits, weight baits, not nothing like that. Yeah, I've got a few fish. <clears throat> You'd be proud, Brendan. I caught uh a four pounder on a three quarter ounce chicken jig, which like You did? It's prob yeah, tonight. Like, so I mean, a, a chicken jig's probably eight inches long when it's all. And it's like, right. I mean, it's a it's a big profile in the water for sure. Uh... I have not heard anything from the tournament director uh, at the TOC. We probably they probably need to like come up with a stance on it. Um, there you go. Here's some homework for you. Led Zeppelin four side one. Fast times at Ridgemont High. You got to do some YouTubing so you take can. I need to take a picture of that so I remember it. I got it. What's a good starter area to try to figure out the smallies on leech? Um, I mean, where, I guess, 
this is not a secret. Where they originated and first took off in the lake is in the south, south central southeast corner, right? Like uh, Pipe and that down, the area down by Pipe Island, right? I mean that's where they originally took off. I think so, yeah. So <clears throat> they've they've kind of. Uh, I mean, people are catching them in locker. People are catching them in sucker. People are catching them in um, portage. I caught mine in Boy Bay. Um, so they're they're kind of everywhere. But I think the highest concentration is still down in the south central part of the lake. But the problem is, and Brennan will probably tell you this, or Brennan, sorry, is that uh, there's so much structure that looks really good, but they're not on all of it. Like, oh my gosh, look at all this cool rock, and it just never stops, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, it's it's almost overwhelming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, and you can spend literally days scanning and fishing what looks to be amazing smallmouth habitat, and you may or may not run across them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough. That's what I kind of... What I, graphing around it's like oh this spell looks good this spell looks good and then like oh well got onto this and now all this stuff looks way better than the other stuff so just finding the or the key areas or the high percentage places was a big thing for me yeah, all right all right we're gonna take like a quick 30 cent break 30 second break and then we're gonna come back and talk about your college stuff a little more Sweet. Are you ready to reel in your next home purchase or refinance? Supreme Lending's Dream Team can help guide you through the entire mortgage process, from pre-qualification to closing. We have a wide variety of home loan programs in our tackle box, including down payment assistance and first-time homebuyer options. You can ask Hella Bass. He trusted us to help finance his home. Contact the Dream Team today by searching Supreme Lending Dream Team or click the link below in the description or scan the QR code on your screen. All right, we're back. Got to pay the bills around here. <laughs> so yeah, like I mentioned, if you guys are uh, looking at getting something, Give my guy Aaron a call, the Dream Team. Give him a shot. It's always good to support companies that support the fishing people. Uh, Ted says it took him two years to catch a smallie out there, and he was finally able to catch. And shout out, I think we talked about this last. Uh, Ted had the big one of the tournament, a 6.6-pound smallmouth. Did you see that thing? He brought it out of his live one. I was sitting on the dock waiting for a bag, and like I was like, oh, my God, that thing isn't like – it wasn't like – didn't have a giant forehead, a big belly. The whole thing was just big. It was long, and it was just, it was thick everywhere. So it was pretty crazy. Yeah, actually, in 2008, the last time they had the state tournament there, and I think I took third or fourth at Leech. I think I had, like, 17 pounds a day for largemouth <laughs> back then. But, like, I had 17 pounds the first day. Like, and it was, like, there wasn't any wind the first day. And leech just went off. Like, I think I was in like after the first day, I had 17 pounds, and I want to say I was in like 30th. Like, literally everybody that like wet a line had 15 pounds. Like, just literally, it was just one of those days where the lake just went crazy, and like 21 pounds was leading it on largemouth, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it was crazy. And but then the next day, the wind blew, and the bite got tough. And I caught another 16 or 17 pounds, and that moved me all the way to, like, third place or fourth place. It was, like, the bite completely changed. Um, the guy that had, like, 21 pounds, like, barely held on to, like, the 10th place spot, uh, the last guy in or something like that, or 12th place or something. Um, but uh, I actually, in practice, caught, like, a two-pound smallie on a dock down south of Horseshoe back then, like, on a sand dock. And I was like, that's cool. What? Like, I've heard about these unicorns. Like, so, I mean, that was, like, 15 years ago. Um, and then three years ago, the TBF had their state tournament in July up there. And Michael and I went out on, like, a whatever, Wednesday night or something. Like, like the, our first night, we got up there after work. We went out for, like, three or four hours. And I tried to fish around, like, Pelican and all that stuff, like, out in front of and Pipe and all the super obvious stuff. Just But, like, fishing. This was before, like... 
uh, I didn't have front facing and most people at that time, three years ago, honestly didn't have it. Um, right. and, uh, never had a bite. I mean, maybe like a rock bass or a perch, but never, like, I never saw one, never felt like I had one on, never felt like, oh my gosh, I think that was a bass bite. And I was like, <laughs> and in that tournament, I fished the docks in Horseshoe Bay and I caught like a two and a half pound smallie inside that little cut but I couldn't use it. Like it wasn't in the tournament, but like those are the only two small eyes I've ever caught up until <clears throat> this year. And uh, in practice, I think I caught three keeper smallmouth, and the biggest one was like two pounds. So it was like pretty frustrating, but anyways, so college Montevello. So this is your third year. Like what, what yep. what's you got goals? You got plans? Like do you, like I, uh, I'm not even like super familiar with like how the, college structure works these days like are you going to fish a certain amount of like college opens or regions to get to like what what's what's the what's the plan college is like tournaments in college are crazy like hundred boat tournament out here is like oh my gosh look at all these boats there's like we fish in tournaments that are like 250 boats every single mm -hmm. tournament and it's it's super overwhelming and it kind of like it kind of gets in your head a little bit but um so like in the fall when school starts up right away there there isn't a lot of those bigger tournaments so it's a lot of the school run tournaments so there's you know 30 40 50 60 boats and you're fishing on still like the bigger lakes and the lakes around the colleges and stuff and uh, so those smaller tournaments are worth 100 points each and they take your top placing boats for however many boats your school sends to that tournament and then uh the bigger tournaments they're worth a thousand or two thousand maybe it's or sorry double points so they'll take your top one or two or three uh top placing boats for that tournament and there's mlf and uh bass so the bigger tournaments start in the spring usually in january we're in florida uh the last two years we've been in at harris chain and then you'll start moving farther and farther west as the water warms up so they'll try to like chase the spawn kind of as a kind of like the elite series where it starts in florida and kind of works its way up Mm -hmm. or it's like i don't know arkansas or stuff like that but for us it seems like they always put us on lakes when it is not on fire and it kind of seems like they do that on purpose to us so, but i mean you make do with what you got so but it's insane how many boats are out there seems like there's a boat on every single spot so and nothing is kept a secret out there just because of all the college kids are insanely good it seems like nowadays and 250 boats it seems like no matter how big the lake is they always find a way to no matter how bad it's fishing, they always they always catch them, and there's always a boat on every single spot. So it is it is really tough. So is it like just a points thing to make the nationals, or is it points to get to a regional? And like how like how do you? I mean, obviously the goal is to get to the national championship, and right. And, but so like, what is it just a points thing? You have to fish so many tournaments, get so many points, or like how do you make the nationals? So for in, for you and your partner to fish like the national championship for bass or MLF. You have to qualify for one of the. You have to qualify through one of their four, three or four qualifying events during the spring. So uh, you'll have to be in the top ten or twelve percent, depending on what, what tournament it is, how many boats there is. So you're looking to be in the top twenty-five for every single tournament to qualify. And then as more and more tournaments are fished, it's there's obviously like double qualifiers. So Easton, Father Gill, and Nick Dumkey, they're they were ranked number one for uh, college teams this year, and they fished from Montevel. Uh, unbelievable guys, super nice, and they're insanely good. I think they qualified at every single one of them, but they're mm. double qualifiers, so they'll kind of just work their way down the list of people who haven't qualified yet. But, yeah, to qualify individually, you need to be in the top 10 or 12% for each tournament. And then the points thing goes for, goes for your school. So you start to rack up, like, school of the year points. That's, like, what they're called. And then at the end of the year, you fish the national championship, and – that one's worth triple points. So you'll, uh, they'll take your top three placing boats. Actually, the one on Pickwick starts tomorrow. I, me and my partner didn't make it last year. That's why I'm not there. But um, so good luck to all those guys. Rack them up, sack them up. But uh, it's, it's unbelievable how tough the competition is. And then at the end of the year, um, they'll add up all the school deer points. And that's where you'll get your national championship for your whole school. And we've actually done that for the last three years in a row now. So pretty, pretty amazing. So you just have to finish in that top 10% in one tournament to go to the nationals. Yep. Right? That's right. Yeah. So have you made the national championship yet in your first two years? Uh, we've gotten, 
I actually blew it for me and my partner last year. So we were at the Harris chain, got onto a really good bite in late January or whenever it was. And we get to our first spot and everything's going good. I catch a six and a half pounder was my PB up right now, catch a few more small ones. And then we're like, all right, this is going good. We got in our first spot, go to take off. And my motor starts beeping at me. I'm like, God, what is going on? Try to take off again. Same thing. So I went into my Merc, went into guardian mode on me because it was low on oil. And that was my fault for not checking it. But we were uh, we were on some good fishing practice. And I still to this day, I feel horrible about it. Kind of got some PTSD going through my head. But you live and you learn. But that was like our closest we've ever come. But otherwise, we've just been, been like middle of the pack. So like if you didn't have to idle the rest of the day, you feel like you could have bounced around and caught enough fish to like. Oh, yeah. We were like one of the last last boats to take off so we would have had a really long day but we kind of just idled and then some of our teammates came up and picked our picked up our fish and we had like i don't know 14 and a half pounds at like i don't even know 10 o'clock or something and that's when things went not so good yeah that was a tough hill to swallow like the one time we finally get onto it it's something's got to happen and of course it was my fault too so but now i carry oil with me wherever i go so Tough lesson to learn. Always carry, I actually feel like weird oil. now that I have a four stroke, it's weird not having oil all the time. Right. It's like I hear people talking about oil and I'm like, wait, I I haven't put I haven't checked. Oh wait, I don't I don't have to. Like it's weird. Yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. insane. Just having to add gas and go now, so it's pretty nice. Except for the uh, four hundred dollar oil changes every hundred hours, which right. Exactly. <laughs> cool well all right so what which tournaments on the college schedule are you most looking forward to this year they actually haven't announced them yet i don't think they announced okay. uh, big ones in the spring till like october maybe but uh there's one more chance to qualify for the mlf national championship on hartwell and uh they announced that we're going back to lake toho that's where it was last year for college mlf so the national championship will be held there January 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, I think, think Hartwell is in like October, maybe September, something like that. So that's the last chance to qualify for this upcoming one. And then after that, it restarts and you're qualifying for next year's one again. So that's a good question. I guess we're going to talk about what, what, what are you running for a boat? I'm running a Phoenix 920 Elite with a four stroke Merc. Awesome boat. I absolutely love it. No complaints. Nice. Besides me, not putting oil in it. What's that? Where'd you get that? Um, I got it from an NPFL guy two years okay. ago. I got it from Jeff Dobson in Oklahoma. Nice. So you have a wrap, right? Yep. Yeah. So when I I saw you like in registration, and I was like, I thought it was just Northwoods fishing, and I was oh my like, gosh, the amount of times I get that is unbelievable unbelievable and i was like it's that is the most generic i was like that is the most generic dumb <laughs> yeah that, that's exactly how it is like northwoods fishing like what do you like what does that even mean and i had to go and explain to him that's northwoods finishing so it's actually my parents company that they own and i'm pretty blessed in the situation that i'm in for them um, supporting me in every way they can and you know letting me go to all these tournaments and uh that's like northwoods finishing is like that's my saving grace right now it's they allow me to do all the things I get to do, all the rods, tackle, and the boat that I have. I owe it all to them. So, yeah, right on. <laughs> I think we. I did notice after you like turned broadside, and I reread right. it. I could yeah. tell, but um, that first I was like, I'm gonna show it here. Yeah, it seems Easy like to... uh, it seems like every tournament I go to, Northwoods fishing. Is that like your old high school team or something, or is that a little like? Thursday nighter you're in. I had to explain everybody or to everybody, but I just explained to all of you guys. So yeah, it's really so, easy to mess that up too. That's the worst part. So if you see this coming down the lake, that's, that's Brennan. <clears throat> yep. It, when you see it now, it's like a little more obvious, but like, I guess when it's just moving or like being pulled, I think you just, your mind wants to see fishing. Cause you see that, you know, that word right. so often, I think is what it is. Nope. That's, that's definitely it. Seeing a boat and you're like, oh, fishing, Northwest fishing. 
kind of clicks in your head. You don't even realize that it's finishing. So that's kind of funny explaining it to everybody, but it gives me a chance to, you know, explain what the company is. So. So what, what is, uh, I guess, did you mention what Northwoods Finishing does? Oh, sorry. So they're a finishing company, obviously, and they do uh, cabinets. Uh, they actually do residential painting. Uh, so sanding cabinets, uh, finishing them, staining them, all of that. It's kind of like your kitchen cabinets. They can do all that for you. Outside residential painting. Um, and my parents actually own the Princeton Golf Course here in town, too. So that's pretty sweet. So like the kind of service like the north of the cities area up there or? Even even like south of the cities, they do jobs all over. Hmm. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, Ryan rode along with you for eight hours, and he still thought it said fishing on the side of it. Yeah, for some reason, it sounds familiar, like him asking about that. I feel like he's like, North was fishing? Like, it sounds so familiar. I think we talked about it at the dock that morning or something. Maybe you need to change the color of the N so the right, N right. stands out. So. <laughs> I mean, everything just kind of scrunches together at that point. There's so many I's and N's, and so... Very cool. Yeah. Fishermen can't read good in general. So. So you're heading back to, so what are you studying at Montevello? Um, besides bass and. Yeah. Right. Um, majoring and marketing, pretty basic stuff, but I'm starting to get into some accounting stuff too, which is hard, but it's a really, I think it's a pretty necessary skill to make a really good living. So starting to dabble in sure. the market or some, excuse me. Uh, accounting stuff so that should be pretty fun so what what is your i mean being that you're a junior now like do you uh do you intend to get a job and, and have a normal career do you plan to like chase fishing as a career like what what do you think is your what do you want to do i don't know i feel like if you're trying to chase fishing i don't think there is a normal job really i think you kind of you know sacrifice a few things or you take one career path or the other so i'm going to try to pursue fishing um, I know it's going to be pretty tough, but, um, try to get a job in the industry that allows me to still fish at the same time. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, but really, I haven't really figured anything major out as of right now, but that's my, like my one big goal this year is to kind of figure out after college, what I'm going to do, like fresh out of college. What are, what are my goals? Who do I want to be working for? What do I want to be doing? I know it's pretty nice. basic, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I mean, that's definitely a thing that like, if you really want to like pursue fishing, you got to like pursue fishing or like, you right. have to like, I don't know if avoid a career or like choose your career carefully that, um, yeah, you almost need to be flexible or self-employed to some right. degree to really give yourself the best shot. If that's really what you want to do. Um, Going and taking a job with two weeks of vacation and starting a family right away is not the best path to professional fishing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'll uh, benefit you much. Or I don't think your fishing career will last very long, but yeah, you know, whatever, whatever works. So what's your what you said? What's your uh, you said Gunnersville your favorite lake down yeah. by school? Yep. There's no is there like are there any like little sneak hole lakes that are not like big lakes that you like to fish down there? Or? I don't know. I haven't really branched out much, but much you know, in, in like in Minnesota, we're really lucky because we have what is it, eleven thousand four hundred and eighty-three lakes or something. So, and every lake seems to be like above average. So, like down there, there's only like you know four or five major lakes. So everyone is the same amount of people are pushed onto the you know four or five major lakes. So it seems like there's only a few places to fish, but usually the lakes are pretty good down there. You're up here, you can fish these small lakes, and it seems like you can catch 15 to like 18 pounds on largemouth wherever you go, it seems like. But it's definitely a learning curve down there because everything is a river pretty much where you got dams on both ends and the water fluctuates every night sometimes even. So, or based on the year. So in the winter, they draw them down and then in the summer, they fill them back up. So, but just yeah. pretty much the biggest thing is just not as many lakes. Because honestly, where I live is not like a great density of lakes for a place that's called Lakeville. Um, mm. Like... But I would bet, like, where you live, you could probably, what, draw a 10-mile circle around your house, and there'd probably be 10 lakes. Yeah. I live, like, three minutes down from, like, actually a, a really good lake, and then I 
there's actually a lake right across the road from me. And then there's one or another one just down the road from me. And then one right, right before town. So it seems like there's lakes everywhere and they're all good. So is, is knife any good anymore? <laughs> I actually have a, like the best, I, I know for a fact I have the best spot on that lake. Like I found it on accident. I sat down to go like frog some area. Like you're talking about the one in Mora, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That lake is like, it's super tough. But like I sat down to go to a frogging spot and I caught on side scan like this giant, giant like set of trees underwater and mm-hmm. me and my friend fished it. And like there is like a hundred, a hundred bass on it. And we just racked them up and saw it completely by accident. But that is easily the best place on the lake. It's a little, little secret sneak, all that I found and fished one time. But dude is waiting for a tournament to show up on. But, but it's out there. So I'm just kind of waiting for some for our uh loon state to get out there and oh man it's gonna be crazy if you do oh you don't want to waste it on a club tournament you want to like uh somebody to have like a five thousand dollar money tournament out there i don't even know like i don't even know how big the lake really is but if there was a chance that a decent sized tournament could be out there i know where i would fish the whole tournament so i feel like it's got to be I mean, I, I know it's not a super small lake. Like, it's it's a pretty I mean, decent like size. It's probably lake. from the north end of the dam, at least an eight minute run. Like it's got to mm-hmm. be six, seven, eight miles long. Yeah, probably. Now is it I like super, super like fishable? All of it? No, but like you could easily have like a twenty, thirty boat tournament oh, yeah. out there for sure. There's actually smallmouth out there too. So nice. Greg, uh, he lives up like Princeton Zimmerman area. So yeah, actually. So, uh, I went and watched the Tuesday nighters last night because I had to get my SD cards from Sobe. I uh, went to the weigh in and, uh, there was a couple of small mouth weight in Cannon Lake. So we were uh, curious whether they actually existed there, but the, there was a couple of weighed in. So, <clears throat> the. I think I heard about smallmouth and knife, but I don't know that you're going to, I mean, it would make sense. It's a, what is the river that runs through knife? Oh, I have no idea. I could not tell you. I couldn't even guess it if I wanted to. I guess it, it doesn't surprise me the amount of rock and hard bottom that's right. in. Yeah. I think I've, I've actually heard of people like frogging, like frogging them up. It's kind of, kind of goofy. And like the nastiest, like, not even thick grass, just like kind of empty grass or just like the grass is brown, black. It's got like that moss all over the weird moss and people would catch them on, you know, a spook or a popper or a frog even. It's kind of, kind of, kind of weird. I've definitely caught Mississippi river smallmouth tend to eat a frog. Yeah. That's like one of the only things I've ever heard of that happening. So. Yeah. They're usually good ones though. When you catch them on a a frog. Like random unicorns that are just there. Yeah, Cannon has got big ones in, but doesn't have a ton of fish, Ryan. But uh can be good. Where's that like that? It's down by Fairbolt. Okay. It's part of the Cannon River system. So it goes all the way. I guess I don't know how far the Cannon River system goes, but like Sakata and uh, there's like a whole chain of lakes through Fairbolt that go all the way to the Mississippi River. That's all the Cannon River. So hmm. that's kind of cool. All right. Ralph wants to know what's your best advice for someone who wants to start off with local tournaments? I'll let you go first since you're. You've started in local tournaments more recently than I have. I just like what I did. I just joined a a club and, and fish a cull. I think that's the easiest where you just bring rods, whatever you want to fish with for the day. You meet new people and they know people. So you kind of just meet a bunch of people through that. And then eventually you can be a boater if you have a boat or, you know, work your way to a state championship. That's pretty much the way I got started in the competitive bass fishing. Well, besides high school, but that's a little different. But yeah, definitely, I, I definitely agree. join a club. Find yourself a Bass Nation or a TBF club, uh, it, especially Ralph, because you're moving, so you're you're going to a brand new place. <clears throat> you know, you get to meet 
a variety of people. You get to hop in a variety of people's different boats. You're going to learn a, a ton. Um, so that, that'd be my advice for sure. And it's a pretty easy common bond fishing. Um, right. well, it seems like the popular consensus in the chat, it's the knife river that forms knife like. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, Chitanka, Sakata. Yeah, those are all the lakes that go down there. But so uh, I don't know what else. We got a little over an hour. I don't know. I don't have a lot on my agenda. Um, I should probably. You got a nice looking T-shirt, by the way. I don't know if people yeah. notice you're nice. You stand up a little bit so people can see your T-shirt, Brennan. <clears throat> yeah. Little Omni love. Is that where you got all your uh, your uh, Power Team lures drop shot baits? Was from Omnia. That's like, that's where I get all my stuff. I pick it up, just run down to Golden Valley and pick it up. I think it's the easiest. So I remember first buying stuff there four or five years ago, maybe three, three, four years ago. And it might only be like three years. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And uh, no, they had stuff, just everything was based around like Minnesota. So now they have, seems like they have just as much as like back a warehouse and it's local for me. So decently local for me anyway so but you I, can't, I mean like you, dr- you drive down and pick it up even though it would be there the next day at your house probably usually it takes like two days to get to my house and it's there like at like okay. 10 a.m in the morning but like for a tournament just drive drive down 45 minutes and go pick it up the night before so and they have it ready really quick i actually picked a big order up there today so yeah. if i order before like noon it usually is at my house the next day that's awesome <clears throat> but also my office is only like 10 minutes away so sometimes i'll like be at work and i'll just go over and get it at lunch or like mm-hmm. the past couple ter- like on the way to leech on friday i ordered and then just picked it up on the way out of town like even in college that's where i get all my stuff from and i try to limit it to one order a, a month and i just use your code that's pretty much what i do so Oh, OMHB 23 August AUG. Did you figure out the code? Did you, did you yeah. crack the, the algorithm so you know what it is every month? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty complicated. Um, yep. Pretty frequent user. And it seems to be the easiest for anyone in Minnesota that I've, that I know of, anyways. Have you, uh, so say Nick says I get my stuff next day all the way to Crosby. So you just got you're not order you got to get up before noon right. and submit you your get order and it'll like be there o'clock. the next day. Yeah, I know they're really like o'clock. order before one. It's shipped and it's you know it ships right away. Yeah. Ships the same day, yeah. but I know that's my problem. I just ordered at like you know five o'clock. So um, have you have you convinced any of the uh, the other kids not from Minnesota on the Montebello team to jump on the Omnia bandwagon? I have actually, and it's funny you ask. I, I really have, because like uh, I told them to use your code too, and everything. They're like, "Oh, I get fifty percent." Some of them have made accounts, so they're getting money back and everything, and sure. they love it. I actually just bought a reel with all the like, extra money that I saved up, so it's pretty sweet, pretty neat program, very underrated. Nice. People realize, like, I don't, I yeah. I mean, Taco Where Else is fine. They got a lot of great stuff. They, right. they're, they're definitely a pioneer. But, like, you realize that, like, you can get stuff way faster. And so. Way faster. Like. I would say if you don't have forward-facing sonar, I think you'd be better off going to some of those other lakes, like uh, Baby, Boy, uh those even even woman some of those lakes you're gonna probably be better off just generally fishing leech you could stumble on them and have a banner day especially when, like if you're not going when a tournament hasn't been there in a couple of weeks but um just I the amount of be time off you need to put into that lake it seems like if you're just up yeah. there for a weekend or something or a day it's massive too it's a hundred and twenty thousand acres especially if it's windy not yeah. far not fun yeah i would i would hit up 10 mile i mean there's a bunch of other lakes that uh if you got limited time and not live scope that i would consider for sure uh yeah and there's other stuff around brainerd that is also good um 
I mean, whitefish has a growing, like growing smallmouth population. There's, there's probably other lakes up there that I don't even know about that, uh, have a lot of smallmouth. They're probably little sneak holes that are probably just chocked full of them that are way easier. <clears throat> Patrick says, curious in your thoughts on Great Lakes finesse. I've I haven't tried any of it. Have you tried any of that stuff? I always get ads on like Instagram and I I I know for sure I could probably catch a fish on. I just haven't really tried it. Not bashing them or anything, but it looks pretty decent. And I know I know people that use them, so yeah. I just Try to like sometimes at some point put a, a a limit on the amount of tackle that I buy, because I bought a whole bunch of stuff, max scent and drop shot hooks and other stuff, and then end up throwing a frog all tournament. So, like <laughs> it's like I spent all that money dead set that I was gonna figure out a way to catch smallmouth because I knew that was the way to win the tournament. And that's what my like ultimate goal was. And then after like beating my head against the wall for two and a half days, I ended up throwing a frog and you know, not quite achieving my goal. But uh so but that stuff happens. Yeah it does. You win you you lose a lot more than you win. That's for sure. I've gotten my butt handed to me on leash the last year and a half. And this is just one of the tournaments where everything went right, I guess. So one out of 30, we'll say that. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. What other questions do people have in the chat? Um, Aaron says, what is the classic bass champions tour? So it's a, a Minnesota tournament league. They do what? Three tournaments plus a championship. It's, yep. it's definitely the biggest money tournament circuit in minnesota i think you fish for i think it's a grand to get in but i think first place is 12 grand it's 13 um, now, now this year for each event 13 and if you make it if you qualify for the top 25 for angler of the year you get to fish in their no entry fee tournament which you, you fish for a brand new skeeter boat so yeah. pretty and pretty insane so, yeah the only thing that's tough about uh how do you get into it? Uh, you just pay your entry fees and enter the, uh, I mean, they typically have a sign. I mean, there's like the people that I'm pretty sure they have a priority thing. Like if you finish in the top half of the field or made the championship, you get priority entry. And then anybody that fished last year gets in, but they, I don't know that they've filled filled up really filled. fast. What's that? For the most part, it fills up really fast. Cause it's it seems like the last few years has been a lot of the same guys, but there are a lot of new guys still. So. They've had quite a few new guys. I don't think they've filled. They've been close. I don't know that they like fill fill. Like I think like they cap it at sixty, and they've been having like fifty four, fifty seven. I mean, like they're close. Um, right. Yes, if you're from New York, you can fish it. You just have to commute, which would be a bit of a commute. Um, the only thing that's tough for me is with a regular job and. D- uh defined pto their tournaments are typically on thursdays right and with being in every fish counts it's a little tricky to just roll in there on like a day and a half of practice and i think to consistently compete unlimited practice most people show up on friday afternoon or saturday and they practice saturday through wednesday and fish wednesday or fish thursday so it's almost a week long commitment for each one of those. So if you're going to fish all those, it's that's your, if you are a person that has a, a regular job, that's either the only thing you're going to fish or, uh, so it's a little tricky, but if I had, uh, you know, more time, I definitely would be interested in it for sure. Um, my, let's see, Scott says my smallmouth PB, it's five something. I don't know. I've definitely never caught a six pounder. Um, a lot of my best smallies have come on Mille Lacs in tournaments where a five or a five and a half wasn't relevant for big fish. <laughs> so like, I don't know if it's like 5.2, 5.3, 5.6. I don't know. I didn't necessarily get a weight on some of those small mouths. So it's, it's somewhere between five and five and a half. I don't know. What about you, Brennan? Uh, six and a quarter, six and a quarter on leech actually. When was that? 
um, earlier this year. Uh, Post spawn stuff. Kind of just a freak, absolute freak on a drop shot again. That was pretty crazy. Might have been Tad's I, fish. What that? Oh yeah. It might have been Tad's fish. It could have been. It was a. It was skinny, but like its face was like so blown up and so like abnormal is insane. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Zimsk or Zim KS. Anybody throwing any goofy JDM tackle at these Minnesota Smallies? Watching Taku makes me want to try some stuff. Um, there's definitely guys. I know like Punch Fishing, he throws a bunch of that like depths and you know, I don't know. Like for me, it's hard to justify soft plastics JDM because they're so expensive and so soft that like you're just like ripping through them like left and right. Um I don't know. I don't mind like JDM, like like jerk baits and some of that stuff and topwaters and stuff and investing some of that, but I'm just not a big fan of like, I mean, like OSP crankbaits are pretty good, things like that. I don't own any of those, but like some of that stuff I'd experiment, but I'm not a big fan of like the JDM soft baits. I don't know what your thoughts are. I want to try the OSP like cubes. I just want to have, I just don't have a pack of them to have them. I think they're kind of goofy. Speaking of things that are outrageously expensive, they're like stupid. They're like sixteen dollars for like a four pack of cubes or something. They come in a four one. pack. I've seen people sell trying like trying to sell them on Facebook Marketplace for like twenty five bucks ship, and I'm just like, that's five bucks. That's like what five six bucks. Uh, and you're like, I know a perch is just gonna eat it off my line. Oh my God, <laughs> it's gonna destroy it. It's gonna get destroyed. Uh, there's actually a guy uh, in our chat that made some for us. I actually have like a homemade pack. I, I threw them in the boat for leech, but I never actually like threw them. Um, That'd be hilarious. Uh, glad the stupid tube's working out for you, Critical Gravy. That's awesome. It's almost a seven on a Hazadon. I mean, Mega Bass is fairly. Po there's definitely people throwing like. I mean, if you if you consider Mega Bass JDM, there's a lot of people using yeah. like the uh, the Okashira and the Hazadong and the uh, what's yeah, their other swim bait or whatever. Yeah, and what's the other swim bait? Not the Hazadong, the uh, Spark Shad. Spark Shad. Yeah, I know a lot of people that throws or that throw those at, down at school. some homemade cubes um i have never heard of fire on ice on Mille Lacs. nope sounds awesome hmm. river smallies on top water i don't have a ton of i mean i did lose a couple the other day the problem is sometimes they hit it so hard and they're so mad that it's just like they don't Sometimes I don't feel like they don't get the bait well. Um, things I have done, I do like to put a red hook on the front, on my front top water. Um, I feel like in some instances, uh, the uh, it gets them to hit the front hook. And if you get them to hit the front hook, there's more chance that you're going to get the second or third hook in the fish somewhere along the lines. I like uh, on the... the Sometimes the back hook I'll often put a double split ring on. Um, and then I typically throw braid with a really short mono leader. And then I think it's all about matching the action of your rod to that setup. And so, like, I'll throw a Vixen or a Spook or whatever. This one doesn't have, right? But, like, I'll typically this front hook will be a red hook for me. And sometimes I'll put a, a trailer on it. But you want super sharp hooks. A lot of times I'll double split ring this back one just so if they get it on the back one, you don't have, a, you know, the twist. Um, and then it's just for me, I like throwing a braid and I throw a fairly soft, like a three power Dobbins. And when they hit it, I just kind of pull into them. And typically with braid with a super short mono leader, it just locks them up. And then it's just like, don't horse them. Like <laughs> the harder you pull on a current smally fish, the more they're going to want to come up. So like once I get them like hooked and get them away from 
the rocks or the grass or whatever it is, then I just kind of ease up on them and let them kind of do their thing. That's my best advice. Um, I don't know if you have a bunch of river smolly experience. Nothing, nothing good anyways, but <laughs> usually they come on, they blow it out of the water and I'm sitting there wondering why my spook isn't in their mouth. So, or they knock it and the line gets caught in the tribal hook. So. Nice. I don't know. Anything else we need to cover from your eight? No? Any, any other secrets you want to divulge about your uh, your win? Any other upcoming events? Anything we need to know? I got the team trail on Pacagama this. I actually leave in the morning to go start practice, but All right. yeah. And then I got one full day after that, and then I leave right away for college. So there you go. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Are you in position to make the championship or not? Absolutely not. Pretty much okay, so swinging for the fence again. So. So if you but if you win, right? Oh. Win, you make the championship. Right. For the team trail. And actually, East and. Yeah, Easton and his dad actually won the team trail event on Leech with like a little over 23 pounds. So that's pretty insane. So they're qualified for that. I think Easton is flying back for the tournament. And the tournament is on Dead Lake. I don't I can't remember the dates though, but yeah. From what I've heard, the lake is pretty pretty sweet. A, a decent amount of yeah. fish and some big ones too. I don't know if you've ever been out there, but not in many 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 years oh really no so when i was like 12 13 14 i'm 45 now <laughs> they had uh the state tournament was actually on dead and star and it was a split field half the boats fish dead one day and half the boats fish star one day and then they flip-flopped um kind of, that's kind of weird how did they stop doing yeah, that so the, or is that the only time that, that, that was like a as far as i know that was a it was like 90 something 94 95 91 like like early early to mid 90s this happened and i was pretty young at that time and like uh the, i don't know if it was the year of or the year before gopher had their club tournament up there and we were camping up there and i was up there with my dad helping him pre-fish but i wasn't in the club yet i was like 13 or 14 or 12 or something and there was a the little resort we stayed at i don't remember if this was dead or star that we were on to be honest which one it was but we were staying on one of them and uh everybody took off in the morning and there was like this little like rowboat with oars that i could use that was tied up on the dock and i went out for a few hours and i beat like half the guys in the club <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's, so awesome. that's like my, my dead dead and star uh memories so uh i feel like there might be some nepotism here my mom that's why i got i got all of uh brennan's moms and uncles and sisters and cousins watching that's why i have so many people on facebook tonight yep. family friends high school friends uh some college kids am i only 44 I'll be 45 in November. It's hard to tell when you're this old. Uh, uh, AJ says dead has plenty of fish, including good ones. I think it has a decent walleye population as well. So speaking of that, David, so we did a, a members only live last night where I had kind of used technology and come up with some ways to do make uh, live fishing a little more interactive. Uh, so I haven't scheduled it, but tomorrow night planning to go out with my buddy Pat and we're going to do a little one V one live fishing on the boat tomorrow night. So watch for that to get, that'll be on Facebook, be on YouTube, but we're going to try to do a live fishing tomorrow night. One V one should be pretty active. It's going to be a little different than what people have typically seen. Uh, so watch for that. I think it's going to be uh, pretty good. So, and we're going to mainly frog fish. So, no front facing sonar, no, no, no drop shots. We're just going to see if we can have some fun and uh, bust on a couple. Um, how many people are at the, in, in the Montevello program? 
60 to 70 maybe. Wow. 75. Just kids on the fishing team. It's a really big team and seems like everybody's a hammer. So kind of an iron sharpens iron moment where you go out, you fish with anybody and you learn something really, really neat or something really beneficial. So the best of the best fishes at that school, in my opinion. So really awesome nice. to fish with a bunch of different people. Especially around the whole uh, country too. People from California, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, Texas. It's really it's awesome. Very cool. Yes, Mr. Bezik, Daniel. Uh, let's see. There was a question here I wanted to touch on here. Gus says, don't know if it's been asked, but what are some key features when scrapping for smallies when there's a ton of rock that all looks similar? Um, finding whatever that's different, whether it's one big rock set off the rock pile around the edge, that's the rock is way bigger than the other rocks, or there's a hard sand line on there where they go back and forth, or maybe where they're uh, transitions in some grass or um, something along those lines. But seems like on leech there's a lot of those you know mega school bus boulders out there and that is pretty much the deal so that's what i try to look for is the biggest boulders i can possibly find and running as many of them as you possibly can in one day at any time did you ever see the fish on your side imaging um i did there's i have this special rock where i caught both my five pounders day one and two off of and they're sitting right up pretty above the rock like some bulbs in a christmas tree so that was pretty insane that was like the first time i ever grasped smallmouth which i never really thought i would usually they're so tight to whatever they're holding to <laughs> yes matt Borboom is on the montevello team nice He's how many old... kids from minnesota at montevello nine i want to say something nice. like that i mean it's like more than 10 percent 15 percent it was a so, good amount and we all fish against each other in high school. So that's kind of a conversation starter or we all at least know who each other are. So. Very cool. So we are going to attempt the, uh, the first, so we've done a members fishing live. We're going to try to attempt a full live, live public for, uh, for everyone to watch tomorrow night. See if we can make it as cool as I hope it can. Hopefully the signal is good and it's not a disaster, but. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I think we're, we're about 90 minutes. I think we covered everything. Um, if you guys came in late, there was some good nuggets on Smalley fishing on Leech Lake. If you want even more, I can tell you about all the struggles that I had. Uh, I got nothing on box this week, Brian. Um, so like, you can you can watch my replay from last week where I talked about my largemouth fishing and my practice in great detail. And if you came in late and you missed something, you can... Uh, Catch the replay, rewind on Facebook or YouTube, or uh, search Hellabass on your favorite podcast app. That way, when you're out fishing or walking the dog or driving down to Montevello, you got something to listen right. to to keep you entertained. But uh, any any uh, final, do uh, you want people to follow you anywhere on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that? Or uh, Yeah, so Facebook, uh, I do a little bit of YouTube stuff every now and then. I'll start that back up for our school tournaments, kind of give everyone an inside look on what tournaments look like on different lakes down south, but everything is uh, at Beeberg Fishing. So, cool, very cool. Make it nice and easy for everybody. Nice. All right. Uh, as always, here to help you guys catch more big bass and suck less.